Hello everybody, welcome to On the Bright Side. My name is Daniel, and I am watching My Hero Academia. Last time on My Hero Academia was one of the most hype episodes that we ever had, possibly. <laughs> we had Deku show up to face off against All for One slash Shigaraki, while All for One thought he was ready. He was, in fact, not fucking ready at all, because... <laughs> Because Deku's a little bit, uh, overpowered now. We got to see the final quirk, gear shift in work, and, uh, you know, he could just control the laws of physics, essentially, on himself. <laughs> Unfortunately, it looks like All for One is evolving as well, but we're gonna take a break from that, and we're going to go to where Spinner and Shoji are. This episode is going to be exciting because it's about Shoji, who is a character that uh, has always been kind of, like, present in this show. Uh, but I've never really given him much thought. He's never been, like, a super interesting character to me. But he's gonna get focus in, th in this episode, and I'm... I gotta say, I'm excited to see. <laughs> if you guys are excited for more My Hero Academia, then you should do yourself a favor and subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single My Hero Academia reaction going forward. My videos are kind of getting fucked in the algorithm right now for My Hero Academia. I don't know why, so if you could please like and watch through the entire video, it would really help me out. <laughs> Let us begin in three, two, one. Go. Raindrops are falling on. Oh, painting filter, watercolor filter. So I'm guessing this is Shoji backstory. Ooh. It's about heteromorph stuff, huh? This kind of prejudice came in kind of late into the story, but we're getting into fantasy racism. Let's go. Going back in time a little bit, okay. Yeah, we're we're joining. Yeah, let's catch up on this. I I never even considered that Kurogiri was a high end before right now, actually. That makes sense. Yeah, lots of heteromorphs. This is where a lot of the police look to be as well. Okay, Rock Lock and, uh, Present Mike. Dang, it's not working. Uh-oh! Ooh! Ah, Koda. Okay, with his birds! Yeah, where's... Where's Shoji? Yeah, he... You guys need some... Serious powerhouses, and you don't have any of those. They have a common, common goal. It's probably true. I mean, what? People have been, like, morphing their bodies in weird ways for, like, only, like, a couple decades? Are things worse in the countryside? That makes sense. It's like, if we haven't defeated racism in real life, people have looked different for... World building. I can't imagine that that's entirely true. <laughs> I remember people talking about the social commentary in this show and like, it's hitting hard right now, huh? Is Spinner, Spinner's not even like really about this uprising though, that he finds himself at the head of. Gross, bro, keep it inside. Yeah, are you okay? Ah, he's just on a on a rage, huh? I feel bad. Oh yeah, here we go, Shoji. He's got so many fists to punch with. Yeah. He, based on this, grew up in the countryside. He experienced the worst of it. <laughs> That is true. 
Good point. There's no relation. Uh, he, maybe he was thinking about throwing himself into the river. I was thinking that earlier. Ooh! <laughs> yeah, this doesn't seem like too much of a plan to actually get, like, justice. For heteromorphs. Ooh. Are those scars from when he had the bandages? When he was younger? You doing okay, Spinner? Oh, Spinner is not okay! He's not okay! <laughs> Oh boy. Oh boy, the mouthpiece is talking. That doesn't make sense. Oh boy. Why is he bleeding? Oh god. Oh, he's got blades coming out of him. Scale mail. God, it's fucking. <laughs> what are we in the heavens feel? Root? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I've heard that reference before. Ew, you're a leak player? Gross. <laughs> Me having just finished Arcane on my channel. That looks fucking scary. Ooh. Ugh. That's really dangerous. He's just losing it. He's losing his mind. Ooh. Oh god. Hold on. I have to pause so I don't lose this train of thought. I thought people were kind of like joking when <laughs> they implied that Shigaraki was like a, a league player. No, that's that's canon, huh? Alright. He, op he opened up about it. In the past. Hmm. Yeah, Mina says, <laughs> fuck racism. <laughs> she is also got some heteromorph stuff, right? <laughs> Did I microaggression? <laughs> That's the funniest way to call someone an octopus, though. Yeah, it's like... I mean, I got octopus things. Yeah. Mm. I respect it. <laughs> oh, man. I, I love this kind of, like, the character building and world building stuff. Maybe he was going to throw himself in, but he ended up saving someone instead, and that turned things around. The fuck show? You got me tearing up over here? <laughs> oh. <laughs> that made imagery. Oh my god, jump into him. I love the Baku squad just jumps in to be like, No! We love you! <laughs> oh my god, Koda. He looks sick as shit now. <laughs> He's going one on one against Bane. <laughs> Killer Croc. God, it, it looks insane. It, I love that design. Ooh. No, he makes a lot of good points while he's punching our leader up there. Is that so? <laughs> uh, yeah, code is mad. Whoa! <laughs> oh, it's evolved. His quirk is evolved. Is he controlling it with his thoughts instead of his voice now? Oh my god! <laughs> ah, I wish we knew her name. 
Slime guy there from episode one. <laughs> My respect for Shoji has gone up like so much in this episode. Yeah, and it's happened right, right before your eyes. It's like. <laughs> Hmm. Here's his horns. Mm, yeah, he is. He's get. He's closer to the animals than ever. Than ever. Mm. Mm. And and I say I respect Shoji so much, but also Hitchcock birds. Peak. Peak references peak. <laughs> and and this like transformed fist. Or break his swords. And that could be a Splatoon reference. Whoa. Cool. Come back to us, Spinner. I've been saying this is not the real him. So scars actually weren't... I was wondering about this. The scars actually weren't caused by anyone. This is on. Now we're finally getting the real him in there. I, I get his feelings, I do. But, like, Hero Society's probably gonna change after all this shit that has gone down. Well, we have to, we have to get Spinner to understand. Uh-oh. Real gun, please. God damn, he's cool. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get over this. It's like red crocodile, like red hulk. I was kind of talking about maybe some people would complain that they're not maintaining momentum, but that episode was absolutely maintaining momentum. Could it be possible that we get, like, Shirakumo back next episode? Man, guys, it got hot in here while I was recording that, but I stuck it out until the discussion. Alright. Yeah, I really didn't expect any of that at all. That is definitely, like, a departure from what this season has been like so far but it's a really welcome change of pace super awesome episode i don't know i love this like expansion of like the lore of this world you know like when the when that talking talking head guy you know the one with the insect legs was mentioning like events like i assume like uh massacres or riots or, or protest or something you know like, we can point to those in our real life. Also, I won't get into it, but all sorts of things. But it is kind of, like, impossible to watch this episode and obviously not take it as an allegory for real-life uh, struggles, you know? I think you can, like, put in a lot of things, but I think it's most obviously a race allegory, which I feel like there's very few series that put in, like, like a fantasy racism thing and uh it actually ends up good uh i'm gonna call out one of my favorite shows ruby the whole stuff with the faunus is a little like not the best piece of writing from the show <laughs> but as far as i'm i'm concerned i felt like this one was pretty solid or in, in general uh even if it's not about even if you don't take it to mean race i think it's left purposefully ambiguous to not necessarily be about one thing uh, at its most ambiguous is about outcasts of society i don't know i personally really liked the line that shoji gave where it's like don't let them obviously all these people that are here are being taken advantage of using their actual hurt and pain for causing this riot just so that they can get kurogiri back no one actually cares. Offer One obviously doesn't care. I don't think Spinner really cares all that much. There's a part of them that ha that must, but, you know, he's roided out right now, so... <laughs> 
And I don't think Skeptic cares. They're just having their, like, hurt be taken advantage of. And uh, Shoji is saying, like, no, like, the pain that you've gone through is valid. This is not the way to get rid of that pain, and you're being used. Don't let them use your scars against you. I respect Shoji way more than I possibly thought I could after this episode. <laughs> I mean, thinking back on all, all the, like, important things that has happened to him in the uh, that he's been a part of in the show, like, the first moment that I can really remember Shoji being, like, a fun character was in uh, the uh, sports festival when he was in the, uh, when they were trying to steal the bandanas and everyone was on, was, like, on top of each other. Uh, platonically. <laughs> I remember Mineta and Sue just like protected by him, um, and I thought that was that was a that was a really funny thing. And both of them like jumped to hug him after after it was all like talking about having only one good memory. <laughs> They're all like, "No, we love you. How dare you say that?" But yeah, I I really you know I respect him for being vulnerable with his classmates. There has never been a a group of 20 kids that have gotten together better than this this class 1A I feel. You could not get that to work out in real life. I just I just love the class 1A antics, I think uh and and, and just like the actual legitimate emotional moments. Uh one of the strengths of this show has been the ability to have this cast of 20 kids and have them all be somewhat relevant to the plot. I could never. <laughs> maybe, maybe I could. I tr I'll try it someday. <laughs> I'll try to write a story with that many characters and make them all relevant. E even like, I would say a less relevant character than Shoji Koda got uh, time to shine in this episode. Uh, he evolved his powers. He's got horns, and now he can communicate directly with animals with his thoughts. And he's bringing the birds upon us. I like that Koda was a part of this too. There are quite a few which students in uh, Class 1A are heteromorphs. I was kind of wondering about that. Mina was pissed. Rightfully so. And I'm like, wait, she's a heteromorph, I guess, because she has the horns. But, like, what qualifies that? Because there are a couple people in that riot who... The only thing about them is that they have, like, horns. Like, if we're getting into it, it's probably easier for those people to go about life. Which is unfortunate, because it should be as equally easy for everyone, right? But, like, does Sue count as a heteromorph? Koda, Shoji, and Tokoyami are fairly obvious examples. I'm trying to think to, if I've forgotten any. From a, like, character design perspective, the heteromorph idea of characters, of, like, quirks changing changing people, how people's bodies look, it is a really important part of My Hero Academia's visual design. Like, so many of the really recognizable, like, characters have these heteromorphic traits. Like, the craziest character design is definitely, like, the manga c character design, or, like, like, the manga guy that has, like, the text bubbles. There's also the one in class that has, like, the glue right is that a is is the like whole metal part hetero this is raising a lot more questions um if anyone wants to discuss that further in the comments we'll do that but i feel like i should end that there but yeah i really i really like this episode very emotional for for shoji I, I almost i even like teared up a little bit when he was saving that girl i'm like that's probably her, him saving her was probably when he knew, like, oh yeah, I'm gonna be a hero. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna change things. He he wants to be a hero because he likes saving people, not because he he wants any sort of revenge. Yeah, it's crazy how a single episode of My Hero Academia can just switch a character from being like I don't really think about them that much to being like top tier. This scene. This is way back. This is way back in time. This is so funny to me. I, I swear I remember years ago people like headcanoning this, or I thought it was headcanon. Was this a scene at any point previous, like previously that I was unaware of? It's also just like, I mean, it, it shows, it. He, he thinks of this. 
I'm I'm not just laughing at the scene. I, I it's like important for Spinner's character. He thinks of this because this isn't important for him. This is when he felt like he bonded with Shigaraki, I assume. And that's and he's he really likes Shigaraki. That's why he's done all this for him. Uh he's really down with his way of thinking. He he agrees that like, uh well, it, you know, it, he said his feelings if the heroes win, then nothing will change. It'll go back to the way it was. I'll go back to being a shut-in and the friends that I've made, it it's all over for us. Um and on some level I I definitely kind of see where he's coming from and I think he's a little bit right that like if the heroes win, will things go back to normalcy? Maybe at a different time things wouldn't have changed that much for you, but like after all the damage that All for One has done and with so much of hero society like torn down, it feels like it's like these issues will physically need to be addressed before the country can start rebuilding so i don't know i i would say that there should be a little bit more faith in the future especially because so much of this season has been about leaving the next generation leaving things up to the next generation making things good for the next generation it's not that spinner's like too much older than uh shoji and koda but they are the next generation and they have good heads on their shoulders with with them like pushing forward to change with shoji who's actually experienced uh the depths of discrimination that this country has for heteromorphs you know i think that he will try to make a change and i think that things will change um but spinner right now is in no position to hear any 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 logic he has hate in his heart which is Something that once it's ingrained in there, it's hard to overcome, so. But that's what we gotta do. We gotta stop him from getting to Kurogiri. We're gonna get, like, a Present Mike-focused episode next time, which is hype, because Present Mike, excellent character. But yeah, I hope you all enjoyed my reaction to this episode. If you did, you can let me know by leaving a like, and you can subscribe and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss a single My Hero Academia reaction going forward. There's not too many left in this season, uh, you're not going to want to miss uh, any episode going forward. And then I'll be so excited for the final season because it's all it's all but confirmed that like this things won't be wrapping up in this season and we're probably going to be getting a final season now that the manga is done. With all that being said, I hope that I can make your day better and I hope that you continue to have good days. Until next time, take it easy, everyone. I love that I kept this image up <laughs> this entire time. What is it? League of of Legends? What? I, uh...